The article I'm discussing today is to be published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology Journal and it is entitled Progressive Primary Sclerosing Cholangitis Requiring Liver Transplantation is Associated with Reduced Need for Colectomy in Patients with Ulcerative Colitis. We felt that it is necessary to do this study as in clinical practice we observe patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis, hereafter referred to as PSC, who require liver transplantation, appear to have clinically mild ulcerative colitis, hereafter referred to as UC, and vice versa. Also, a recent study from England suggested that clinically progressive PSC requiring liver transplantation was associated with a milder course of UC, meaning reduced disease activity and less use of steroids, azathioprine, and surgery. The aims of our study were to evaluate the clinical and endoscopic features of PSC and UC with regards to treatment and to compare the course of PSC and UC in patients with non-progressive liver disease to those with severe liver disease who required liver transplantation. So to do this study, patients with PSC and IBD who required liver transplantation were identified from prospectively maintained database that is electronic data interface for transplantation which contains information on all patients who underwent liver transplantation at the Cleveland Clinic. Patients with PSC and IBD who do not require liver transplantation were identified using the PSC and IBD database. A total of 312 patients with PSC and IBD were obtained from the database of which 167 patients with PSC and UC were included for the study. Patients with Crohn's disease, intermediate colitis, and ulcerative colitis patients who did not have a follow-up or were on the liver transplant list and did not get a transplant were excluded from the study. Patients with PSC and UC were divided into two groups, 81 who did not need liver transplant and 86 who required liver transplant. There were no significant differences with regards to duration of UC between the two groups. While the duration of PSC was longer in the liver transplant group with a median of 13.5 years versus 11 years in the non-transplant group. Patients in the transplant group with available lab values to calculate the severity of PSC at the time of initial referral to our center had much higher serum bilirubin, aspartate aminotransferase and lower serum albumin than in patients of the non-transplant group. The initial Mayo PSC risk score was also higher in patients who later required liver transplantation, that is 1.67 versus minus 1.19. The clinical ulcerative colitis activity was found to be significantly mild in the liver transplant group, 68.6% versus 14.8% endoscopically and histologically. Similarly, UC flares requiring treatment with steroids were significantly frequent in the non-transplant group. The use of azathioprine mercaptopurine was significantly more frequent in non-transplant group than the transplant group, that is 17.3% versus 1.2%, while there was no difference in the use of biologics between the two groups. There was significant difference between the two groups regarding the indication for surgery. More patients in non-transplant group underwent colectomy for steroid-dependent or refractory disease, that is 30 out of 62 patients compared to 12 out of 30 patients in the transplant group. Colon carcinoma and dysplasia were also more frequent in the non-transplant group, that is 37 versus 18 in the transplant group. Based on Cox regression analysis, liver transplant for PSC independently reduces the need for colectomy with a hazard ratio of 0.43. Our study highlights that severe progressive PSC requiring liver transplantation appears to be associated with a milder course of ulcerative colitis, reduced incidence of dysplasia and colon carcinoma, and reduced risk for colectomy. The requirement for liver transplantation and a higher Mayo PSC risk score at PSC diagnosis seems to be independently reduce the need for colectomy. While the development of cancer and dysplasia increase the risk for colectomy for the underlying ulcerative colitis. This study is significant for a number of reasons. The inverse relationship between the clinical activity of PSC and UC may provide a link to the pathogenesis of PSC and its relationship to UC. 
newer therapeutic modalities for the treatment of PSE, exploiting the lymphocyte trafficking between the liver and bowel, can be explored by better understanding of this relationship. There are certain limitations of our study. The study population was recruited from a subspecialty tertiary reference center. This contributes to a selection bias. This is highlighted by the fact that PSE patients who required liver transplantation had a higher PSE risk score at the initial presentation to our center. The retrospective nature of our cohort study limited our ability to obtain longitudinal data. Nevertheless, this is one of the largest studies on natural history of PSE and UC in which PSE patients who got liver transplantation had mild ulcerative colitis and vice versa. To conclude, Severe PSC requiring liver transplantation is associated with a milder course of ulcerative colitis, a relatively reduced incidence of dysplasia and colon carcinoma, and reduced risk for colectomy. The requirement for liver transplantation and a higher Mayo PSC risk score at the diagnosis appears to independently reduce the risk for colectomy. While the development of colon dysplasia or colon cancer increases the risk for colectomy. The relationship between the pathogenesis of liver and gut inflammation needs further studies in the future. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention.